Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. And as you can see, this is a Bible study on the book of Revelation, the whole book. That's right, the whole book. And you don't need to worry if you don't know it or haven't read it or have confused ideas about it or it's one of those books you've just plain avoided. Uh, that's why we're doing this. We're doing this so that we can break the book down into small, little, bite-sized, easy to digest parts. Uh, every single one of these videos is only a couple of minutes. And so I'd encourage you to uh, just bounce around. You can go back and watch from the beginning if you'd like. You can start here if you'd like. Uh, we're just now starting Revelation chapter four, and uh, you're more than welcome to open your Bible and read along with us. Uh, Revelation four is pretty cool because it starts to talk about what heaven is like. Uh, one through three are kind of a grouping together, those chapters, and chapter four begins a brand new section. And um, it's a view of heaven, you know? For anybody who's ever said, what does heaven look like? Or what's heaven like? This is a really good place to start because it's John's glimpse of heaven. And typically, uh, I think we're inundated with pictures of angels and wings and halos and cl fluffy clouds and pearly gates, but that's not what we see here in John's book. In fact, there's probably nothing in this book that we could actually point to and recognize and say, oh, I know what that looks like. Just watch. <laughs> Revelation 4 verse 1 says, after this, so that would be after the letters, after he's written the letters, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, which I had heard, speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. So this first voice he's talking about is from Revelation chapter one. You can go back and watch those videos where he talked about what Jesus looks like. You know, those same questions about what heaven looks like. Well, we could ask, well, what does Jesus look like? Well, John describes Jesus in Revelation chapter one, and he talks about his voice as sounding like a trumpet. Jesus is the one who walks among the seven lampstands. And Jesus has had John dictate uh, letters to the churches, but now, like I said, we're in a new section. Jesus says what happens now is, in his own words, what must take place next. So that would be end time events, right? We're gonna start entering into um, some prophecy. In fact, if you'd like, on your own time, uh, please read Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7 is a good companion chapter to what we're going to read in the next couple of weeks. Verse 2 says, At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven, with one seated on the throne, and he who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Well, first, what does it mean that John is in the Spirit? Well, we kind of assume that that means that he's not uh, left the earth physically, that this is something that he's seeing in his mind or in a vision or in a dream. And he sees a throne, right? He sees a throne and he sees someone on the throne. So again, we would say, well, what, what does this person look like, right? Well, he describes this person using uh, precious jewels. He says, Jasper. Jasper is like a crystal or a transparent, white-ish looking diamond. And then carnelian, which would be like a ruby, like a red, pinkish stone. And then he says, and all around this is like a green gemstone, like a green gemstone rainbow that's circling all of it. And then he says, around the throne, in verse 4, were 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. See, this is not what we think of when we think of heaven, right? Who are these people? There's 24 thrones surrounding the main throne. Well, they're probably symbols of us. You know, back in the Old Testament, there used to be 24 elders who would each represent one of the various sections of people. And so we believe that these are the believers. These are the Christian church. These are people that represent us because of the way they're dressed, because of what they look like. Uh, the Bible says they're clothed in white, and we know that the scriptures say that we are clothed in white garments, that we are clothed in righteousness. It also says that these people um, wear crowns 
above their heads. And we uh, have passages of scripture that talk about us receiving crowns of victory. Verse 5 says, From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne were a sea of glass that looked like crystal. So not only is there a throne in heaven, and not only does it look like precious gemstones and diamonds and green rainbows, and uh, there's 24 thrones that circle that throne, there's also sound. You know, it's not that deafening, quiet library sound when you walk into the throne room. No, this throne room has peals of thunder. Do you know what thunder sounds like? Here in Texas, uh, we know what a thunderstorm sounds like. It's loud. But also, on the throne, not just the physical manifestation of God, but also the Spirit. You know, we don't always see the Holy Spirit. But here it says that there are torches of fire, like the flames of Pentecost. You know, how often does the Spirit manifest himself as an image that can be seen? And here we see the Spirit of God also on the throne. We've never seen anything like this. I mean, look at that last part, a sea of crystal glass. This isn't the throne room that we think of when we pray to God, is it? I mean, when you pray to God, is this what you're picturing? Is this the being that you picture in your mind when you pray? And, and if it's not, why isn't it? Because this is what John says the throne room looks like. I mean, maybe if when I pray it, I pictured it this way, then I would gain the awe and the respect that I think God deserves. You know, Hebrews chapter 6 says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. I think drawing near with confidence to the throne is important when we pray. Because this is where God is seated. God is the one who upholds all things by his power, by his word. And every time we pray, we approach this throne and we stand before God, but with intimacy, with knowledge, with love, with family. And he has our attention. He listens to our requests. In fact, the Bible says he knows what we're going to ask before we ask it. This is so stunning. But yet, Hebrews says that we draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, not fear. I think when we picture that throne room in Revelation, it would make us afraid, especially loud peals of thunder. And a lot of kings have sat on thrones and certainly haven't been filled with grace. They've been tyrants. They've been benefactors. I don't think any mortal king or any mortal leader has sat on a throne of grace. Our God is so bent toward grace that he seats himself on it, that he is surrounded by it. And his throne alone is the throne of grace. When you pray, you pray to this God who sits on a throne of grace. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.